Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host and today I'm very excited to be welcoming back Sarah Noble from Mindfully You. Now I want to put a disclaimer before this episode. We are talking about miscarriage. So Sarah, those of you might remember Sarah from our second episodes uh, where she talked about how to find balance as a new mum and she then suffered a miscarriage uh, and she shared that journey with people with her followers and I think it was just amazing and it's not something that's talked about very often it is quite a taboo subject so I want to put a disclaimer out before we get going. She is now expecting her second child and is imminently awaiting the birth as of the recording of this. She has recently given birth to a lovely little girl named Alyssa. I hope I said that right. And yes, I just want to thank her very, very much for coming online and talking about this big subject. So another note it takes me a little while to get into it because i was a bit scared to broach it even though it's something she's talked about a lot so we do have a little bit of chatter to start and then we get into it if you want to reach out i will share links in the show notes to talk to sarah and to learn more or share your own stories as well so without further ado let's get into the podcast Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. I was just thinking, it's it's almost a year to the day, I think. Has it been that long? It's been that, oh no, even longer. Oh wow. Even longer. Um, you filled out the form, so I did a lot of my interviewing the end of 2019, which I didn't realize. Uh, yeah, because it was for the start of 2020. Eh? Yeah, I printed off the old sheet. Does that mean Dylan's two now? Yep, he is going to be, what's the date? Oh, shit. In a couple of days, he's going to be 26 months. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> yep, crazy. Oh, my goodness. Where's the time go, eh? Like you've been popping up on my Facebook every now and again and on Instagram. And so you've always been there, but then it's like you kind of forget how long ago it was since you actually spoke to someone. Yeah. Yeah. This year's just been crazy, eh? Like just a weird, like blur of fucking weirdness. <laughs> it basically sure has. I think everyone has had some kind of big thing to deal with even if it was just dealing with life and covid it, yeah it's just it's enough in itself yeah yeah crazy but well, let's hope this year's a little bit better eh? a little bit kinder to us all yes i hope so <laughs> i can't get it can't get any worse right don't say that. You never oh, I know. <laughs> no. We could have another lockdown in New Zealand, but I mean, I don't see that happening if we continue the way we're going. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. I'm dancing well, that- around because I know it's still an uncomfortable topic, miscarriage. Dude, I'm not worried about it. I know you're not worried about it. <laughs> get it just get in there. Like, we, you know we need to talk about it because to get to a point where it's not uncomfortable it's not it's not scary to talk about um because it's extremely common Mm. extremely common and it's so many women are like oh there must be something wrong with me 
mm. something wrong with my body um and they blame themselves and it's we, if if you realized how many women have miscarriages yeah don't talk about it and keep it a secret um because they feel that stigma that taboo or they don't yeah. have support or they don't know how to talk about it or whatever um you know the more people that open up then the more the people that are going to come after and have a miscarriage will feel comfortable reaching out for help and support because it yeah. is a time that's quite traumatic and you need help and support you really do i mean i i've never had a miscarriage i did i mean i mentioned ivf i had one failed transfer and even that was like what is wrong with me what is wrong with my body and it took a little while to just go hang on no it just wasn't viable it wasn't me yeah. it was the dna or the genetics or whatever it was within how that did embryo or egg whatever it was developed that didn't quite develop properly and it had to go nature knows what's up nature knows what's up but even that i mean that was that was only a what if that was never a real a real thing a real baby uh, i remember seeing your post uh i don't know what it was it was something like i'm bleeding and yeah. it was like oh shit <laughs> nice and dramatic eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah just start as you mean to go on it's fine and i was like oh shit and then you kept going and you kept and you went live and you shared it and i was am amazed shocked um I just wanted to reach out and like, oh my God. Uh, but like, it wasn't my journey. It was your journey. But I, how did you find that power to, to go out and share and go help? Um, Cause it's terrifying. To it's, not, it's not all about me. It's like, if, if I'm feeling, if I'm going through this and I'm, feeling a certain kind of way yeah how many other people are mm. but how many other people are afraid to even tell because the thing is with society right we're we're told um don't share your pregnancy until you're past 12 weeks until yeah. you're, you're out of the first trimester and statistically uh miscarriages are more likely to happen the higher percentages it's going to happen mm -hmm. in that first trimester and so in that moment you might only have told your partner and that's it yeah or your partner and your parents and that's it and so there is a huge lack of help and support physically mentally and emotionally and so i was in a position where i think um we had told our parents yeah my partner's parents and my parents um and obviously my partner knew yeah um and i i literally had gone to meet, meet a midwife the day before and yeah. was like yep she's the one and then yeah. the next day i started bleeding oh, nice. um and i was lucky enough that i rang her and was like this is happening and she you know kind of helped me through that um because i had no idea what i was supposed to do what was going to happen yeah if i had to do anything if i had to go get it um checked afterwards to see if everything was like gone you know yeah. Yeah. um all that kind of stuff and i was just like okay wait a minute like this this isn't right like it, it's not right for me to have a lack of knowledge and understanding about what to do in this situation this is yeah. so fucked up like living in a society where we're told to not talk about it. Like if you find out you're pregnant, you're generally going to be pretty excited and you're going to want to tell people, but then, mm. then instantly, so you're like got this, you know, happiness, euphoria, and then instantly you're like, boom, you're smacked with fear, fear yeah. of miscarriage. No, I can't tell anyone in case I lose the baby. Yeah. Um, and that can really dampen your, your happiness mm. and you can be bursting at the seams wanting to tell people or, you're sick, you're vomiting, you know, first trimester yeah. when, when all that's happening and you can't tell anyone, you've got to try and hide it. Why aren't you drinking? And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. 
and you're trying to figure this out and get your head around the fact that you're growing a human and deal with whatever symptoms you have um you know your appetite might go out the window and then you know and it just it's too much like it's it who, is who you know like women need to feel empowered to be able to talk about whatever they want to talk about mm. and so I guess for me it was it was greater than just me it was like because I'm so passionate about what I do and normalizing conversations around pregnancy birth yeah. postpartum motherhood mental health which it's all connected yeah yeah um you know then I I just I feel like if I want to create change then I need to be a part of that change and so that means um I didn't even think I didn't think you know it didn't cross my mind like oh maybe I should keep this private I wanted to share it it was I'm not saying it was easy at all no no, no I'm <laughs> don't get me sure wrong it wasn't <laughs> It was not easy. I think I cried when I did the live, but, yeah. um, you know, and it still brings emotion to me now, like just thinking about it, but, but it's so important for me to normalize these conversations and I can't normalize a conversation if I don't talk about it, if I keep it in too. Yeah. You know? you're just perpetuating that stigma. Yeah. And so if I talk about it and then other women, you know, I had so many women reach out to me that were like, yeah, I had a miscarriage too. And I like, I had no idea. And some, like, I think <clears throat> one woman had had five oh my god you know and um some you know some people that <clears throat> I used to go to high school with that um I'm not even like in close contact with anymore were like yeah I had a miscarriage between my two kids and, yeah. and I'm just like whoa like it's so common but it's just it's not talked about but then you know wouldn't you want help and support if you were going through something hard so I, I don't think that we you know we shouldn't be dictated by society to say hey you should keep your pregnancy quiet it should be mm -hmm. you're an individual human being with your own thoughts about everything your own desires yeah. if you want to share your pregnancy when you're only six weeks pregnant then do it yeah and then you know instead of just being like oh no oh no everyone else doesn't share till 12 13 weeks so i did not do that too just do what feels right for you yeah. and then on the other hand if something does happen you have that support then you have that help and support there because mm -hmm. you know you can say look this is it happening you can you don't have to do it publicly obviously but um i need some help and support whether that be someone you know just bringing you some food coming around for some hugs like whatever getting you out into nature for some walk you know, for a walk, um, because if, if you are in a position like I was, where I hadn't actually really told anyone, yeah. um, and neither my parents nor my partners were in, even in the country yeah. to offer any kind of help and support. So it was really just me and my partner, yes, yes, yeah. um, you know, so that makes you feel even more alone and it makes it yeah. even harder to deal with because you, you don't have anyone to offer help and support because then I'd have to reach out and go, um hey I was pregnant but I'm actually miscarrying can I have some help and support you know and then yeah. I think that would be harder to say rather than people already knew I was pregnant and then yeah, I say that's more pregnant. awkward yeah so yeah. you know I think we need to normalize feeling empowered to share what we're pregnant whenever we feel like it personally not how society mm. majority of society does things or people tell us to do like what feels right for us and feeling comfortable being able to access help and support at any stage of pregnancy no matter what happens I've also had friends that have lost late in pregnancy um one I think uh, 34 35 36 weeks one of the one of those wow. two 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 of my friends um and so you know it, it and and that's something I've been sharing on my journey because when mm -hmm. I hit that sort of 34 yeah. Three, five, six weeks now I was like ah you know and and I had that in the back of my mind yeah. and I'm thinking there's about it there's never a safe quote-unquote yeah. time is there and we must we must talk about that because pregnancy you know it's for some it's really really easy but for others it's really really difficult and for yeah. majority of us it's it's up and down some days it's good some days it's hard and that's the reason why I'm choosing to share a lot about it, particularly off the back of a miscarriage, because you've got that added anxiety of that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the closer I get to that due date, the sort of more safe I feel. 
yeah. because the baby's, you know, almost full almost. term. Yeah, it's almost um, like waiting for Christmas. Yeah, and but but I never really feel um a hundred percent like kind of whoosh, let go until I have that baby in my arms. Yeah. And that yeah. was even the same with my first without having a miscarriage before that. <laughs> oh yeah. There's all there's there is a lot of fear around pregnancy. Yeah. And giving birth and the part like every everywhere you look, it's like gotta be careful because you might have a miscarriage. Gotta be careful because you might um, have a premature baby. You gotta be careful because you might have some problem during labor. You gotta be careful because of cot death. You gotta be careful because people might pick them up on the way to school or every, like yeah. it just goes and goes and goes like yeah. there's any points something could happen and it's like it's fed to us mm. like, and that's something i've actually got comfortable. A post written about the um the fear of pain in um labor because that's obviously something that's on my mind because i'm going to give birth within the next you know few weeks four weeks yeah. so um but the thing is, is that, and, and obviously more so with my first, um, what we're fed from society is fear, fear, fear. Mm. All we see on movies and TV is a woman all of a sudden going into labor. Yeah. Which doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. It, it, it is often gradual and, and pro, you know, pro, progresses over time. Yeah. all of a sudden she's in full-blown labor and she's got to get rushed to the hospital yeah. she's in a hospital gown she's on the hospital bed she's screaming often yeah. for drugs yeah which i think they're trying to make in some cases funny but um it's often the woman screaming in pain mm. on, a, on a on a hospital bed and yeah. so that's what that's what we have that's what we have in our yeah. head of that's what that's what labor and birth is like it's it's fast it's intense it's it's scary it's painful yeah it's, it's on a hospital you can't get bed. through it without drugs yeah and you you know you you're gonna have to have the drugs because yeah. that's the only way to deal with the pain um and epidural that's, rates that's are rising as well aren't they? yeah and cesarean and cesarean um, yeah we we live in a very 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 medicalized society and we've forgotten that that the woman's body is literally designed to <laughs> create life and birth life yeah um but there's a huge block and that is the the fear of this pain and then mm. a lot of our medical system is um very based on this medicalized and 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 you know eliminating this pain because there's there's like there's, there's there's a sympathy there and it could be even with your your partner or your parents or, or whoever's there right in the room you know you might be in pain yeah because they don't want to see you suffer yeah and they don't want to see you suffer so they're like oh, oh can we just give her some drugs but yeah. then you may regret that afterwards you may have said no matter what i say don't give me drugs but they can't handle seeing you in pain yeah even your midwife might be like oh, maybe we should you know <laughs> yeah. um and so that's why this time it's been really important to me to make sure that i don't because there is you know midwives that can be a bit more medical based and a bit more um mm. happy to you know, go, go for the painkillers yeah. and then others who are much more, um, you know, uh, natural physiological based and will try all the things before yeah. even considering any kind of painkiller or, um, like, you know, drug painkiller yeah. or intervention or anything That's like it. that. I mean, it's, it's there, yeah. it has its place, but it shouldn't be the first. Yeah. Thing. Cause you're not injured. That's the thing. It's no. like, I talked about this in my last live. I'm not, when you're in labor and giving birth hmm. you're not injured there's no it's not a medical thing it's a natural physiological yeah. thing that your body is designed to do and i'm not saying that it's not painful yeah but what makes the pain worse is is the fear hmm. is, is the fear of the pain and if we you know if you tighten up and clench up your body yeah that's not going to be conducive to your, your cervix literally opening up and helping exactly. that baby out i mean really it's a major athletic event it's not a major yeah like endurance injury. and <laughs> yeah it's endurance yeah. It's like running a marathon i mean running a marathon is never yeah. comfortable unless you just do that day in day out i don't know but it's that's painful people do it people endure yeah. it people laboring is 
labor it's work it's that's yeah, why it's called labor yeah like it's, it does take work and it does take strength and it does you know and and everyone has different experiences some women don't experience pain um mm. you know but there's certainly going to be some sort of discomfort or whatever but that yeah. doesn't mean that it's a medical emergency it doesn't mean that it's pain that you can't handle yeah if but you've got to have the right environment and the right support and for me yeah that's why I'm doing a home birth this time because oh are you yeah hospitals literally give me anxiety and stress me out and what's that going to do that's going to close my cervix yeah right. that's you're going to have to let me know liver. how that went I, I'm going to need you back to tell me how that went <laughs> Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, hopefully I, I, you know, fingers crossed all goes well and I get this yeah. beautiful home birth, natural physiological birth that I, you know, that I know that I can do and that I would like. Um, and, and that's why I'm sharing my journey as well, because I've learned a lot mm. um, from my first pregnancy and birth and so postpartum. What was the first one like? Pardon? What was the first birth like? Um, it was, I was, um, so I was in a different city. So I, they, we don't have a birthing center here. Um, so it's either just hospital or home birth. Right. Um, there was a birthing center there. Um, and I didn't want to give birth at home cause it was like a brand new house with white everything and a Ooh, shared driveway yeah. and like the lounge faced the shared driveway. It just wasn't appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we chose the birth center, um, but I wasn't dilating and I had been in labor for ages. I already hadn't slept for a bit yeah, because um, the labor sort of started one night and then stopped and then started again the next night oh, and okay. I hadn't slept and yeah. Um, and yeah. And so then, and I just, I didn't have the right midwife in hindsight. Like she was, she was unfortunately that more sort of medical, yeah. Um, kind of focused and so she didn't offer me anything else she didn't offer me any other suggestions of natural ways to kind of deal with it or even reassure me that um a long labor with your first is very normal and it doesn't mean there's yeah. anything wrong um just you know even just words to like relax me and be like it's yeah. okay this it's not something that your body's used to it might yeah. be designed to do it but it's never done it before yeah so um so long story short ended up um she said that I couldn't go to the birth center anymore um so I ended up in hospital and I literally like that's how much anxiety hospitals gave me when we pulled up yeah I um, almost threw up like it mm -hmm. like you know when you get that feeling and it wells mm -hmm. up in your throat and like you get the bile in your mouth and stuff like yeah yeah I had to stop and collect myself yeah um and then go in there and um and then it was just a cascade of interventions and because it was my first time and, you know, these are people that have done it before and they know what they're doing and they've got titles and stuff like that. I just felt like yeah, I had well, to just go with you. whatever they were saying. And I was also tired and hadn't eaten and hadn't slept and wasn't in a position to be able to think logically and properly and have time to consider yeah. things carefully. And it was just like, um, oh, okay, well, my midwife thinks that's best, so I better do it. And yeah. Um, and so, you know, so it ended up being a cascade of interventions, um, and an episiotomy, um, and just, and then I also had a postpartum hemorrhage, um, and then had to have a blood transfusion. Oh my God. So it was all quite traumatic. Yeah. Physically, mentally, and emotionally, because I felt, you know, I did feel coerced and pressured into doing all these things that I had not wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and was obviously frustrated at the support that I thought I was going to get I thought I had made it clear to my midwife but she was clearly not on the same page yeah as nice as she was don't get me wrong um and then yeah I was shoved in like a room with another lady because they were chocker um so my partner wasn't able to stay I was left by myself oh, uh I couldn't even lift my baby to like breastfeed him I had to push the buzzer um yeah. the blood transfusion till the next day because I gave birth at like 12 a.m right so um yeah it was just and then as soon as I could I got that transfusion I got the hell out of hospital yeah uh, and I went to and spent the rest of my time about three or four days in the birth center yeah um and then went home so it was just 
bar having a c-section everything I did yeah yeah you know and so now I've um and which is why I've chosen to share it this what I'm doing this time to prepare for this because um I'm trying to put myself in the best position possible Mm. to set myself up for success and I think a big part of it is actually your mind so the mind-body connection is extremely powerful and um I, I think that I was just, I was too caught up in the fear and the fear of the unknown and the fear of the pain um, for, to allow my body to relax enough to actually do its thing naturally. Yeah. And like you literally like um, cats and things like that, like they can be giving birth and if there's a predator coming near them, yeah, they will get literally up. stop and get up and move somewhere safer. Yeah. You know, and I actually talked about this in my last, um, I think I yeah there's this um like if you think about it if you think about if you pee and poo right like yeah you you wouldn't just go out and pee in public no but you wouldn't be able to do it you physically would you'd, you'd like clam up right yeah. like, you like i need to, to go it. but i can't yeah and so it's just yeah. the same for labor and birth if you don't feel safe and mm-hmm. secure and supported if you don't have the right environment and the right support system yeah you will possibly not you know like not progress or Mm -hmm. um some women have even can even you know say they dilated seven centimeters yeah when all these people come in the room that they don't know and they're like oh you know they it sets off their fight or flight they can actually their cervix can close and go backwards really oh god yeah you know it's just our bodies are extremely powerful and when we really Mm -hmm. understand how labor works and the all the different um mechanics that are happening yeah. in terms of the natural um you know like oxytocin and and things that are happening within your body as well as the physical things that your uterus and cervix are doing mm-hmm. it makes a lot of sense and you're like yeah and so then putting yourself in a stressful environment yeah yeah and i just i just think it's 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 really sad the how um common and normal it is for people to for example want an induction yeah um to even want an elective c-section to uh want the drugs and stuff like that without because because it's so common even before 40 weeks i've i've read so many posts in forums that people are looking at being induced at and the 38 weeks i'm like you haven't even reached full term yet why oh but the baby hasn't turned around yet but isn't it like when you reach the last week or so that all of a sudden the baby puts on a heap more weight and the head turns but maybe by that stage you're not even ready yeah like the thing is is that people are, are like well I'm over it. I'm sick yeah. of being pregnant now. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. I know I can go and get induced and have this baby quicker. So yeah. I'll do that. But yeah. And and that's like it's kind of fucked up when you think about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like why we're in such a rush for everything including having a baby. I know. I mean, I I I can't imagine, but I can imagine that it's been 10 months nearly. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's and it's yeah. You do get over. How are you it. feeling right now? You do feel like a big, huge, waddling whale. Yeah, and it can be hard when it's summer and it's hot and sticky. But the thing is, is that our bodies, like I said, are designed for this. The baby and the body communicate, and they decide when they're ready mm. between them. It's like a dance, you know. They decide when they're ready, and you don't know when that's going to be. And that's kind of you know that can be annoying for some people who particularly if they're a control freak yeah. um but that's kind of the beauty of it as well like that ultimate ultimate surrender mm. of you know just trusting your baby the body the universe yeah. all the things yeah i'm glad you um, said about the baby though because it's not just you who's doing all the work the baby's got to yeah. move and wriggle and get in the right position and yeah they're doing they work, work as well yeah 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 exactly um and it's just, yeah, it's sad that because I'm obviously in due groups at the moment and mm. 
you know, there's certainly been some women who are just like, um, right, I want to get this show on the road. I want to have a stretch and street sweep. What's it been like? And, and I think one lady who said that was only like 37 weeks or something. And people were, yeah. there was a few people that were sort of like, why are you, why are you wanting to have a stretch and sweep? Yeah. And she was asking about it. Um, she didn't say, I just want to get this baby out. I'm over it. She just sort of asked about it and people were like, but you know, but why? And I was like, Oh, thank God people are asking that. Um, Cause why? And why, why, why have we gotten to the point where women at 37, 38 weeks are like, think it's are induced? Yeah. especially if it's their first. Yeah. Inductions are often way more, intense in terms of contractions yeah. um they really ramp it up because it's fake hormones you yeah. know and, and then your body's not working as it should in that kind of harmony with all the hormones and everything because mm. you've got you've shot some oh, artificial God. hormones in there that are overriding everything else and so yeah. then oxytocin can't really work properly in your body because of this artificial hormone and yeah you know and then and and, and uh, you know what i can't i can't compare until i give birth this time and and if yeah. that is, is without painkillers mm. um i've only ever had a birth with um all the painkillers and everything yeah with i had you know with with the the drip the pitocin or syntocin or whatever it's called yeah um and it was horrendous yeah like it's just yeah and 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 i wouldn't wish that on anyone. i wouldn't want them to do that but I also don't, you know, it would be good to have that comparison of like a, having a natural pain-free birth and then mm -hmm. having those interventions and, and being able to be like, and yeah, yeah. So that would, that, you know, that'd be a cool chat afterwards. <laughs> it would. Um, now we've kind I know we've kind of gone off track, kind of, but it is all relevant. But I wanted to go back to um, after your miscarriage and when you found out you were pregnant the second time, the mm -hmm. third time this time um how long after you had your miscarriage did you think okay i'm ready to start trying again what was that process of kind of grieving for, for that one and then getting ready to try again and all of those emotions and i've forgotten my second question so we'll let go with that one yeah <laughs> so i really wanted to not rush things and give myself plenty of time to um to feel ready and I'm quite I like to be you know I really try and tune into my intuition and my instincts and my body yeah. and um get to a point where I'll just wake up one day or I'll just be sitting chilling and all of a sudden I'll be like you know what I feel ready yeah and so if I didn't have that then I wasn't ready um mm -hmm. so I didn't set myself a, oh no, we've got to be pregnant again by this time. Or, you know, I just yeah. left it all open and just said, look, I will, I'll know when I, when I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think I'm a bit, a big advocate, obviously being passionate about mental health, about, um, feeling your feelings and allowing yourself to grieve. And I did actually, I did some posts and lives and stuff on this videos on this, um, at the time about grief, because yeah. a lot of the time, particularly if you have a miscarriage early on like I did you you, you, you didn't see a baby it yeah. was like I think I think it was like just a really big clot right I just think that was my baby yeah I don't know for sure yeah you know and um and you kind of like pe people kind of just think you should forget about it oh it was ages ago it wasn't even a real baby like yeah. it's only a collection of cells or whatever but fuck that. Like you yeah. are allowed to grieve how you want to grieve. And I, anybody who's had a miscarriage will know that you do not forget. You never forget. Mm. And you shouldn't, no. you will never forget the fact that you had, because nobody knows how that feels, but you and your yeah. body yeah. and your mind, like you will never forget the fact that you felt the dance of human life inside of you. Yeah. For however long it was, it does not matter whether it's six weeks, six months, yeah it does not matter like that was real for you and so I think it's really important to grieve however that looks for however long that looks like and it's different yeah. for everyone um and and feel those feelings and so um I just kind of allowed myself to do that 
And I think in the end it was about, I think it was about three months, uh, three, three, four months yeah. uh, until I just got this sort of intuitive feeling that I think I'm ready. Um, and we literally, we literally had sex like once, I think, and then got <laughs> pregnant again. So getting pregnant is not our problem. Um, yeah. And then here I am at 36 weeks. So, um, yeah. I just kind of let myself do what I needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I know, that it's, well. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's different for everyone and some people might take longer to conceive or, you know, yeah. um, but that, that was my journey. Yeah. Cause that's, I think the theme, my theme with everybody I talk to just seems to always go back to listening to yourself know thyself yeah you, you're your expert you know yeah. what's right for you and when it's right and having those experiences it gears you up you can either use it as this thing that's going to hold you back and this terrifying thing and oh, i never want to try and get pregnant again because what what if mm. or you can use it and learn from it and work through those emotions to figure out yeah. who you are as a person how you fit in this journey and yeah it's really really powerful just helping people to realize that they can tune into themselves and it they are their own best expert and advocate yeah and it's that's you know right. that, that, yeah. that starts in in motherhood and and probably mm -hmm. in conception you know but yeah. certainly pregnancy birth postpartum motherhood you know when, when you have the baby and everyone's got all the opinions and all the judgments and mm. you should feed them like this and you should get them to sleep like that and you should you know they should be doing this by now and why aren't they doing that and yeah. are they sleeping through the night and you know and it's and it's just like you you've got to have the you know you've got to feel empowered and have the strength I guess to be able to parent be pregnant give birth yeah. Um, in a way that feels aligned and right for you because the thing is if you don't if you are taking on board all these opinions and um, everybody has an opinion you know, it, it's going to stress you out yeah. and particularly in that fourth trimester right like that oh yeah that, that's hard enough as it is without having the added like opinions of 50 million different people and yeah and trying to please everyone in terms of you know because you, 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 particularly with your first, you have that dance in your head of, oh, well, they've had kids before, so I should listen to them. They'll know better. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what? Nobody's had your kid. Yes. Nobody, and you will, you, you will not understand this fully until mm -hmm. you have a child. Yeah. And you have that mother child that bond with connection. Yeah. You will know. And like at the start, it is like I remember with Dylan, it was just a big fat mess. And I was just like, I don't know what he wants. He would, you know, he'd cry and I'd be like, yeah. what do you want? And yeah. we would literally go around in circles, nappy, burp, feed, you know, do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, and it was really overwhelming, but then eventually over time you get to know this little individual and you get to know the cues and you get, you build mm -hmm. your intuition and it grows and grows and grows. And you're like, you know what? I think he's hungry. Stick him on the boob. Silence. Sweet. You know, like it takes time and you're yeah. also got this huge cascade of, of hormones and emotions and mm. you're grieving your old life most likely yeah you're grieving your independence yeah um you're healing physically there's so much going on and the last thing you need is people dictating judging telling you how to raise your kid and how to do yeah. it's, like, it's something that you need time and space to figure out for yourself because you're probably going to have an idea in your head pre-baby yeah like my kid's never going to watch TV. <laughs> Next minute, yeah. Like Next minute, Netflix is your friend. Five minutes of sanity or to like lie down. Yeah. And the TV's going on because it just, it, it's just it's real life. Rest. No guilt, you know? <laughs> and that's, um, that's happening a little bit at the moment because I need to lie down. Um, yeah. and, it, and he's quite full on. And so if I can't, if he's not, if he wants me to, if he's continuously wanting me to play with him or 
um, like get on the floor and stuff that I just, I can't do at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Then I might resort to that. And, yeah. um, you know, and you just, you got to be open-minded to things, mm. not actually, you not actually parenting the way that you thought you would. Yeah. It's so different when you actually have the kid and you don't know what kind of kid you're going to get, you know, <laughs> That's it. And I think that kind of links into the last podcast we did together, which was finding balance as a new mum. Mm. I'm wondering, I'm going to have to re-listen to that and just see if we went through fourth trimester stuff or if it was mm. longer, more than that. I don't know. I can't remember. No, I can't. I should have re-listened to it. But that that was... That was all about, yeah, what you're talking about now. Yep. I'm going to post a link actually in the show notes so people can go back and listen to the other one as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I have actually done a, um, there's a resource on my website. Oh, I, yes. I think there's a link in my Instagram bio. Um, it's a, just like a, a PDF guide, free guide to um, preparing mentally and emotionally for um pregnancy birth and motherhood because there's so much this is something that I get really passionate about and obviously because mm. I'm pregnant right now but yeah. um there's so much focus on sorting out the nursery and getting cute baby clothes and yeah. all this physical material bullshit yeah. that the baby doesn't give a fuck about and really doesn't need a lot you know clothes somewhere to sleep some nappies you know like yeah. they don't need toys they don't need fancy labeled anything um they, they just need you you know and yeah. some some comfort yeah um and antenatal classes that I went to when I was pregnant with Dylan were just a joke um it was all just you know here's the different ways you can give birth and here's all the different painkillers and you know stuff like yeah. that and it's like, okay so how how do we you know and then you'll you give birth and you're blindsided and you mm -hmm. haven't considered so many things that have changed so you know, it's, yeah. it's talking about things like how do you deal with the um, change in dynamics in your relationship with your partner, including your sex life. It's going to change. You just birthed a, a baby out of your vagina. Like you're not going to want anything to go in there for a while. <laughs> you know, so things that might make people squirm or be a little bit uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but things that are extremely real for every single woman that gives birth. Yeah um and after birth it's almost like the woman's forgotten about it's all about the baby yeah yeah 100 percent. and i mean you get so weighed and measured you're going so many things that we could talk yeah, about there. Healing, all right yeah off you go you can go yeah. back to exercise which is a whole other yeah exactly like the pelvic floor the, the physical yeah. side of things and you know that six-week checkup it was like oh how's the baby you know yeah. that i got it, yeah all good how are you um and most women of course will just say oh i'm okay yeah that's it yeah, nobody fine. questions any further i didn't i didn't get any kind of physical exam on your oh, way wow that's it and it's like that is not did you get your up. episiotomy looked at my midwife did that up until six weeks and then just on my mm -hmm. own hmm. yeah so you know and again i'll be sharing these things and, and yeah. as i go along in real time and and um you know, I wish I had a bigger platform to get out there to more mamas mm. and mamas to be and mamas considering, you know, mamas who are like trying to get pregnant and stuff so they can yeah. be fully informed and not be blindsided postpartum. Um, but there's, there's a huge shift, even the simple shift of like going from independent woman to yeah. being able to eat and, and go to the toilet whenever you want, have a shower whenever you want yeah. to, to all of a sudden not because no. that is reality in those early days. You've got yeah. a small human stuck on you um, for a, a lot of time, a lot <laughs> of hours in the day, um, especially once your partner's gone back to work, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. Like it's, I remember not eating sometimes till like three o'clock and not having a shower until the afternoon. And, um, and sometimes even until my partner got home and, and, and that can be extremely hard, mm. that transition alone to deal with, because it's seemingly overnight, right? You go yeah. from independent woman yeah. to, to not. And even that is huge to deal with, particularly yeah. mentally and emotionally. And it's not really talked about. So women right. don't really know 
who to talk to or or who to ask for help and support and mm. as part of as part of my business that is something that I do like I um uh do sessions with women in terms of like preparing mentally and emotionally for birth as well as um postpartum obviously I'm not doing that at the yeah. moment but um that is something that I do in my work and I would really in the future when I get back to after maternity leave I'd love to do um some kind of like antenatal workshops but focusing on that mental and emotional yeah well that's preparation yeah. it's so needed yeah because it's I just weird. I've looked I sort of talked to a few people and it's just antenatal classes are very structured they're very it's very like kind of government run yeah they're already yeah. crammed and they just they don't have they, they can't really add in so yeah I was just like well I'm just gonna have to do it myself aren't I <laughs> that's how the world changes baby mm -hmm. so well, I've just the... realized we've come up to a whole hour yep already and we could talk for probably another hour so I better draw a line there and invite you back to mm -hmm. when you're ready so whenever you're ready and yeah I think talking about mental health in postpartum and that recovery periods possibly more of the fourth trimester because I have a feeling we didn't yeah. we didn't cover the fourth trimester it was more um broad how to find balance yeah yeah rather than proper it would be, it would probably be good to do a um you know a podcast just on that fourth trimester because that is like yeah uh, particularly when it's your first baby like those first three months are like the time mm -hmm. when you're really just figuring everything out and you're healing and you're doing all the things yeah um, and I'm gonna yeah. be in the thick of that soon enough as well you will um and if you're not I would love to invite you into my group because I think I'd like to share your lives whenever you do them into that group because yep. there's women in there who could do with hearing that yeah totally and yeah i can share share any of my stuff share it in there yeah. so if yeah because you share them on facebook as well don't you yeah so um i go from your facebook page yeah. to share it in my group yeah because i know not everyone's on instagram not everyone's on facebook you know and so I, the lives I tend to um, generally do on both and the posts are obviously on both as well. Yeah. Um, so there is like a playlist there, which has all my pregnancy chats. So even if you just link that, mm. it'll have all of them there. Um, mm. For example, or sharing when I do my next one, hopefully I, I, I'm planning on doing one probably around 38 weeks. Um, yeah. And then yeah who knows if i'll be, <laughs> be doing another one after you that know, watch this space yeah so um but then i you know depending on how everything goes i might jump on and do lives um postpartum as well yeah it just, it just totally depends on and I, i'm not putting any pressure on myself no to to do anything um and if i don't do lives i'll certainly be doing posts yes Perfect. but it's all about just you know reaching as many women as possible so women don't have to feel alone they don't have mm -hmm. to struggle in silence they don't have to feel like they can't talk about it yeah like there's something wrong in the world when a woman you know like myself gets pregnant and then I realize how hard pregnancy is and how many of my friends and my my mom and you know have given yeah. birth and no one talks about it yeah it's like that whole societal conditioning of you know oh just yeah 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 you know and then you get the comparison of like oh well she's you know had um what's that condition when you puke the whole time h uh hyper hyperemesis hyperemesis, hyperemesis providing like playing hg yeah. so um you know oh, yeah, oh, gravidar, she's had right. hg so i can't complain and it's like you, you invalidate yeah. your own feelings and experiences and it's like i actually did a post the other day yeah. about that um that might be one you want to share actually um the fact that I, I had a quote on it too, which I think is powerful, which is yeah. um, uh, just because or just because I find pregnancy hard doesn't mean I'm not grateful that yes. I'm pregnant kind of thing. Something like yeah. something around that. Yeah. But like it's so true. It's like just because I'm finding this hard doesn't mean 
Yeah. And I'm not grateful to be where I am. Yeah. You know, because so, so many people it's do that. To suck. Positivity. Like, oh, we'll just be grateful that you haven't had miscarriages or just be grateful that you found it easy to conceive. And it's just, mm, and then you feel like, shit, and it's like, that. yeah, that's not, that's not helpful to anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually had a comment on one of my posts recently that I just, I just didn't, I didn't bother to even reply to. Yeah. Um, I was posting about struggling. Yeah. Um, Cause I like to keep it real and I'm not perfect. I'm not a guru. I'm still working on my own sort of shit. Yeah. And, um, and a lady is obviously overseas and she was like, you know, you'll be fine, blah, blah, blah. But then she was like, you know, be thankful you're not in a lockdown, yada, yada. And I was like, but, you know, I well, understand, I I understand yeah. that it's hard yeah. for you to be in lockdown right now. But that kind of, like that kind of comment just, well, all that achieved it would make me, serve anyone. Yeah, it doesn't serve anyone. It just makes me feel like shit that I'm not on the lockdown. And it's like, well... Yeah. Even if I was, we've been in a lockdown. So I have experienced that. Yes, we're not in a lockdown now. And yes, of course, I'm grateful for that. But yeah. that doesn't change the fact that I'm struggling right now. Yeah. If we were in a lockdown as well, then I might be struggling even more. Yeah. But it kind of like her sort of saying, be great, you know, be thankful you're not in a lockdown made, yeah. like, made me feel like my feelings weren't valid weren't valid yeah that, you know and that's the kind of stuff we need to stop and a lot of yeah. people are so unconscious of that like she probably didn't even realize the effect that yeah. that kind of comment would have yeah um but i think we need to be yeah, really really so aware of that kind of stuff there's mm -hmm. so much judgment and opinions in in motherhood mm. starting with that conception and this is the time where we need to come together as sisters, yeah. as mothers, as women who understand what it's like, rather than judging everyone for doing things differently to you. Yeah. Like it, it, it's so hard. It's hard enough as it is without having your fellow mums yeah. tee you down for the way you feed your kid or the way you dress your kid or the way you get your kid to sleep or whatever. Like, yeah. it's got to stop. And if we talk about it like this, we try and get it out there to the universe then we can create that ripple effect yeah that's it small pebble in a pond yeah that's so is. that's my big vision obviously yeah. if, if someone has like awesome like connections or like marketing and pr skills so i can get my message out there to bigger people <laughs> oh, hopefully someone it. listening to this <laughs> get in touch i'll pop it i'll pop sarah's details in the in the show notes yeah because it's just like Oh, that you know, how yeah. many women could could we help and empower and inspire? Yes, okay. and, That's the whole point of doing this you know, podcast. Yeah, because I don't know everything. Yeah, get people like you who and having different are, perspectives yeah. and different yeah different experiences is, yeah. is super super powerful because it's all different and yeah. but you can probably see a little bit of yourself or your experiences and all these different stories. You know, mm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah yes anything <laughs> anything um you would like to cover that i've probably missed before we sign off uh in terms of like miscarriage or um miscarriage mainly but anything else really um let's say miscarriage i think i think the main points if we just want to reiterate the main points for experiencing yeah. miscarriage yeah um uh you, there's nothing wrong with your body this is an extremely common uh experience but we think it's not common because it's not normalized it's not talked about enough yeah uh, it's hugely common and there it, it does not mean that there's anything wrong with your body yeah so women you know i think women need to know that um and that you know, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to ask for help and support through it. It's okay to share that you're pregnant before, before 12, 13 weeks. Yeah. Uh, if that's what you want to do. Um, and particularly it's, it's okay to feel how you feel about your miscarriage and grieve in a way that feels right for you. Yeah. However long that takes and, and, and that's, what I touched on earlier that you won't forget other people around you will probably forget 
and people if you talk about your miscarriage that you had at six weeks five years after the fact some people might roll their eyes and be like dude you were only six weeks pregnant like you know it wasn't even a real baby yet yeah get over it like nah you yeah. will never forget if you've so experienced real. loss you will never forget and don't let people tell you you shouldn't still grieve you know yeah. like do what you got to do um I think those are the main points and really just you know not being afraid particularly when you're literally going through it to to mm -hmm. reach out and get help and answers and not you know, so whether that be if you've already got a midwife, you you your midwife helps you through it, or you've had a friend yeah. that's had a miscarriage and you contact them, or um, you go into hospital and you ask questions, and you know, rather than having to like go through it alone at home, or um, yeah, and you can go to A and E, I suppose if yeah, totally. Sure, you can go. Oh, you know? shit. well, even just rock up there and say, "Hey, I was pregnant. Now I'm bleeding." Yeah help <laughs> yeah and I'm sure that they will help you yeah they're not gonna go no go away yeah because I you know I you can link to um, my miscarriage lives if you want to if people want to see more about the actual story of what it was like in a, bit, a little bit more detail but obviously because yeah. I was quite early on we just sort of did blood tests and um and looked at those hcg levels yeah. and uh usually you do it in a 48 hour increment so we tested after 48 hours from that first day that I started bleeding and they dropped significantly. And so that's when we knew right. it was definitely a miscarriage. Yeah. Whereas if it wasn't and it was just implantation bleeding or something like that, then, then the levels they would, they would increase. They would yeah. steadily increase. Yeah. And that's the other thing too, is just because you bleed in that first trimester doesn't necessarily mean you have, you're having a miscarriage as well. Right. Um, so again, so there's a lot of talk about implantation yeah. bleeding where then you go, yeah how much is too much is, is yeah. it all bleed is it this and you're like yeah and I had several bleeds with Dylan but they were very uh it's because I had placenta previa a low-lying placenta oh okay and they were more just sort of spotting yeah um but that was quite anxiety inducing for me and it was also compounded by the fact that I'm an O negative blood type so I needed to have an injection called anti-D oh okay yeah. every time yeah. um and so that was trips to hospitals and getting injected. And I mean, I don't know anyone who likes friggin' needles. Um, so, yeah. you know, there's, there's different kinds of bleeds at yeah. different kinds of stages in your pregnancy. Um, and thankfully this time I haven't had to deal with that um, because my placenta is not low lying this time. It's been fine. Oh, good. Um, and I haven't had any bleeds. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Every pregnancy is different, you know, every baby is yeah. different. They're all little individual creatures. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. We've just got to really try not to get too saturated and, and confused, I think, by the outside world yeah. and all the, the opinions and yeah. um, information out there and kind of just like be discerning and, um, you know, pick what resonates choose you know choose to listen or take on board or consider what resonates and leave what doesn't yeah yeah you don't have to hold on throw to out your whole journey literally from conception to the day you die because you're going to be a mum till the day you die yeah true <laughs> that's very true and on that note that is the end of our podcast that'll do it that'll do it Sweet. thank you very much i was i was very scared of broaching it but I mean I asked you to come on for that specific reason and I'm sure a lot of women will I mean like you said so many people have reached out to you already mm. from sharing your story that hopefully this will just reach yeah. some who didn't know about you before and didn't haven't heard about someone else's story they've just got their own and that's the thing like I said like if if someone speaks up yeah someone takes that first step then other people will go me too oh my yeah. god I sort of relate to this, yeah. whatever, you know, that's where it starts by, by women sharing their stories. Yeah. And, you know, even though it's like, can be emotional and, and stuff like that, like it's, mm -hmm. it's important to me to, to share these, these things. So yeah. I'm happy to, to be reminded of that time or, or deal with those emotions yeah. um, when I know it's like to help other people. Help. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. No worries. Well, thank you. 
For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.